There's talk about getting together an army of the power-armoured faithful of the Adept Sororitas, with some talk of getting a force of Battle Sisters on the tabletop. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Adept Sororitas, and in this video I thought we'd do a start collecting overview for getting together a force of these pious Imperial Zealots. In the video we'll talk through why you might want to collect an army of Sororitas in the first place, some steps towards planning an army and the first miniature purchases that you might think about making, the rules for the faction and what to expect out of any upcoming codexes, and a few ideas for how to make them work in game at the moment. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight in. First up, let's talk through the reasons that people might want to collect the faction. In the lore, the Sisters of Battle are basically the defenders of the Imperial Faith, created out of the dark times of the Age of Apostasy, when the Imperium tore itself apart briefly for a massive civil war, when many heretics turned against the Emperor's light. The Sororitas were founded by Alicia Dominica, who beheaded the tyrannical Lord Van Dyer, and founding the Order of the Ebon Chalice. Since this time, the Battle Sisters have been the militant wing of the Ecclesiarchy, long forbidden by a degree that men should not bear arms under it, but it didn't say anything about women. Sharing a lot of similarities with the Space Marines, their orders are stationed in convents across the galaxy, and they're a well-equipped fighting force within the Imperium, making war in power armour with the Holy Bolter, and also having a great liking for fighting at close range with Flamer and Meltagon, all the better to purge the heretics who defile the Emperor's name. Miniatures-wise, the Adeptus Auroritus are well served by a fairly generous plastic range. Throughout much of the last couple of decades, they've been languishing with a metal army for a long time, and getting more increasingly mothballed as the years wore on. But then five years ago, Games Workshop decided to reboot them in style, a big miniature range coming out towards the end of 8th edition, with really quite a lot of cool power-armoured robed models. The range is mainly true Sisters of Battle units, though their army is kind of split between two main forces. The power-armoured Battle Sisters proper, and also various weird, sinister, and fanatical servants of the Ministorum forces, things like Arco-Flagellants or Penitent Engines, among a few others. Those ones are basically the last surviving old range of models in the army. A few things like the Crusaders and Death Cult Assassins do have some pretty dated sculpts. For a few examples of miniatures within the army, on the left here you can see the standard Battle Sister squad, pretty much the iconic unit of the army, typically making war with their characteristic black and white helms there and often accompanied to war by some creepy little artificial cherub constructs, carrying sensors or instruments of war. On the right, you can see an elite seraphim fighter, equipped with a jump pack and descending from the heavens to smite the enemy's foes with paired bolt pistols. On the left here, you can see a couple of the Ministorum class units, both of them rather sinister. There's the horrendous device that is the penitent engine that sucks the life force from a sinner against the emperor, propelling itself into battle with crazed buzz blades to destroy enemies in combat, and no doubt martyr the luckless occupant in the process. In a similar vein, there's the cyborg guys Arco Flagellants here, infantry with their limbs replaced by whip coils, again thrown into the battle to martyr themselves and take a tally down from the enemy. On the right is a Castigator tank, one of the newer range of sisters miniatures that sort of feels very similar to the Predator tank of the Adeptus Astartes, this one's armed with a battle cannon. And the sisters are really quite well served with special characters as well. They've got really quite a lot of small elite support characters, but also some pretty mighty heroes. Here's Saint Celestine, the living saint. When she was first slain, she was preserved miraculously by the Emperor's grace, and has since returned to life several times upon dying before. And on the right, there's the absolutely mad miniature that is the Triumph of Saint Catherine, pretty much a literal funeral procession of the Order of Armata Lady, inspiring the sisters around them with the bones of their founder on the battlefield, and bearing great relics out of every order. Perhaps one of the less good reasons to collect Sisters of Battle is the pricing. They are generally considered one of the more expensive armies to collect in Warhammer 40k. Part of that comes down to being a very recent range, and Games Workshop do tend to charge more for their newer releases than their older ones. But they also tend to have a fairly bad price point for things like five-man squads of human-sized elite infantry. They tend to be really quite costly for what they are, I think. And there are quite a lot of units in the faction that just don't really get you many points on the board for how much they cost in monetary terms. The combat patrol box is helpful with that, though, I think, and we'll talk about that in a second. Finally, for playing them on the table, in general, Sisters tend to perform as a close-range shooting army. They do have plenty of melee options as well. In general, just with their normal size human stat lines with toughness 3 and 1 wound models, they tend to be a lot more fragile than, say, armies like Space Marines. 
generally tending to hit very hard, but not being quite as tough when the enemy comes to hit them back. Their close range shooting often comes from things like melter weapons and flamers, though they do have a few longer range things like more armoured units like the Exorcist and Castigator, and transport seem to be a fairly common theme within the army. They generally tend to pair quite well with fragile elite infantry damage dealers to keep them safe and get them to the front, or ready to deliver some melter or flamers or some serious melee combat. Their main army mechanic in the game is the miracle dice and acts of faith that they can do. We'll talk about that towards the end of the video, but I think it's a really cool and evocative rule that allows you to basically twist certain events miraculously to your will on the battlefield, or rewarding the faith of the Emperor's loyal chosen. Currently in 40k on the competitive scene, their best lists are say are kind of middling within the game at the moment, not one of the weakest factions right now, though I must admit their army does feel a bit weird. They seem to perhaps be surprisingly reliant on their armoured units right now, which isn't the typical way that the factions usually been played in the past, and besides that maybe quite a lot more focus on their unique special characters as opposed to the individual squads. In particular, melee things seem to be rather underpowered right now. Hopefully that's something that Games Workshop will address in the future, though. Overall, though, I think there's a lot to like about them. They've got some pretty iconic lore, some very nicely executed model sculpts, and at least when things are going well, they have a pretty dynamic and punchy playstyle. The pricing of them is a definite negative, though. If you have chosen to collect an Adeptus Auroritus army, there's plenty of ways that you can find out a bit more about the faction. For their game rules, I'd have a read through their index, which is freely downloadable at time of recording. It's in the download section of the Warhammer community webpage. You could mess around with army lists with things like Battlescribe, Warhopedia, or Games Workshop's app. Building a theory list could give you a better idea as to how the army gets put together. You could try things out on the tabletop with either proxy and miniatures or try and tabletop simulator. And there is an absolutely ridiculous amount of information here on YouTube. I have made a few videos on the gaming side of the Sister Battle here on the channel, including a unit tier list and some examples of how the army plays in game. But there's a ridiculous amount of other content creators making good stuff. There's battle reports, painting guides, and lore in abundance on all sorts of other channels, and plenty of other good folks making gameplay content. If you are researching the faction as well, it's probably worth checking out the social media for the Sister Battle. There's Discord servers that you could join for them. Facebook groups that you can join, and you can check out them on Reddit as well. Any and all of those can just be a good way to imbibe a bit of information from current collectors of the faction, as well as being a place to ask a few basic questions if you have them. Getting back to actually planning an army though, I think early on in proceedings I'd be tempted to draft up a rough 1000 point or 2000 point list, just to get an idea of what sort of units could fit together, and how you might like your eventual force to wind up. It doesn't have to be a set in stone plan or anything like that, but it can just be a rough goal to move gradually towards, and you can adapt and learn more as you go along. After you've got some miniatures on the table, played some games, and found out a bit more about what works and what doesn't. In general, I do tend to focus fairly heavily around an elite infantry type playstyle, but you can definitely play mechanised with transport, and play somewhat armoured if you go very heavy on the castigator or exorcists. A few options you might have when creating a force, other than just going for a balanced sister's army, are maybe trying to build around one of their orders in the lore, say for example the aggressive forces of the Bloody Rose and their love for melee and close range melter. Whether or not you're going to keep things purely to the Sororitas unit, or mix in some Ministorum units as well, I feel like they're a lot more divisive and probably not the main thing that most people usually come to the faction for, though they are quite fun. You could decide whether you're trying to make a ranged or melee force. In general, ranged is a bit more effective at the moment, but Games Workshop do like to rebalance things quite a lot. And how heavy you might go into the armoured or mechanised side of things, with things like rhinos or emulators to transport your sisters to the front. Talking of lore and theming though, here's just a few paint schemes for some of the more standard orders of the Adeptus Auroritus. In past editions of the game, they've generally had a bit more impact on the actual gameplay of the faction, Though currently the idea in 10th edition is that basically any of these could use any detachments that each faction has when the Sisters Codex does come out. They all have some pretty interesting backstory and theming, from the puritanical Sacred Rose to the stoic and enduring Valorous Heart, though there's absolutely nothing to stop you just coming up with your own order with your own colour scheme and theming. Talking of paint schemes, painting up a test model is probably quite a good idea early on in proceedings. I'd probably go for just a standard battle sister of some sort, either out of the combat patrol or out of the battle sister's box. Generally the sister's models tend to have power armoured components and cloth components, so you need to work out what colour and what styles you're going for both of those. 
I often feel that quite a nice way to learn to paint a new faction is to watch a few tutorials on YouTube, see if there's something that you roughly like the colour scheme of, and do a similar sort of scheme yourself with your own twists. Moving on to the exciting bit though, let's talk miniatures, and in general if you're starting the faction completely from scratch, I'd either jump in with either a box of the standard Battle Sisters, or the Combat Patrol box for Adeptus Auroritus, which gets you quite a lot of models and quite a lot of units on the table all at once. If you're starting from the standard Battle Sisters, I'd probably go for a character choice after that to field a legal force, and then move on to some extra hard hitting damage dealers. First up though, let's start with Combat Patrol Adeptus Auroritus, a kit that in general I think is really quite cool as a microcosm for the faction, I must admit I do quite like just how many units that you get out of this, though it does have some disadvantages with being monopose models and oddly small squads in some cases. In the box you get a cannon S miniature armed with the Rod of Office, 10 Battle Sisters with some set war gear loadouts, you get one with a flamethrower, 3 of the Berserk Killing Machines that are Arco Flagellants, 4 Sisters Repenture and a Repenture Superior with their great big eviscerator chainsaws, 5 Seraphim, the angelic ones with the jump packs and the pistols, a penitent engine to charge its way towards the enemy, and a rhino transport, a battlefield taxi to get your sisters from A to B. Price wise, Games Workshop's combat patrols are £95, €125 Euros, or $160, and they generally tend to offer a fairly good discount compared with buying the kits individually. This one would get you a theoretical 50% discount near enough. Genuinely really quite a big asset with collecting a sister's army I think, but I would bear in mind that you aren't getting the full fat plastic kits for these ones, as besides the Rhino these are otherwise monopose miniatures, so you don't say get the choice of war gear options for the standard battle sister squad, nor the Seraphim, or nor the Cannoness. Despite that though, I would certainly pick one of these up if I was starting the faction completely from scratch. I feel like it's certainly a box set that you could get more than one of as well, though you are going to get some repeat sculpts with that, as everything will basically be cloned once. For unit use in game at the moment, the standard battle sisters are usable enough to farm up some miracle dice, and maybe do some combo shenanigans with certain characters. It is a bit of a shame to be missing a multi-melter though, as that's a pretty desirable choice for the unit. Seraphim are good enough, though in general they would prefer some hand flamers right now. Penitent engines are fine. Arco flashlands are fairly efficient, I think they're often better in 10 man squads to try and blend the enemy as much as possible, though 3 man ones can have their value just for being small interference nuisance units, and Repentra I would say currently are a bit underpowered unfortunately, hopefully Games Workshop make these eviscerator wielding maniacs at least a little bit more threatening in the future. It's definitely a nice one for getting some good numbers of miniatures on the table as well, and I do think I'd rather have a lot of small units rather than just say one or two big ones really. Speaking of buying Warhammer 40k miniatures, I'd certainly always remember the options that you have. If you're looking for new plastics, Direct from Games Workshop is the most reliable but also the most expensive. In general I'd usually aim to use local gaming stores to get discounts, say for example Element Games in the UK is typically between 10 and 20% off, and there's places like Fenris Workshop in Canada or Gap Games in Australia, they're 10 and 20% off respectively, and all of those are linked down in the video description below if it's helpful. Those links are affiliate links and help support the channel. Certainly a helpful option for saving money on new Warhammer plastics though. Otherwise you can check out the second hand market, there might be a little bit less going for the sisters compared with some factions given that they're not really all that long in terms of the miniatures having been around. Quality can be a bit variable there, though it potentially can save a fair bit of cost and effort. Otherwise I would bear in mind that there's plenty of sculpts and other creators out there besides Games Workshop, plenty of people make things like 3D printed proxy type models these days, for example here is the Battle Sisters range by Daka Daka Store, found either on their website or some things over on Proxy Wars as well. They do have some pretty excellent alternative resin sculpts that you can either print yourself or order to other places. Otherwise though if you are sticking with GW Plastics, a kit that you're probably likely to come across at some point is the Battle Sister Squad, even if you do get the Combat Patrol it's probably worth having a few more of them in the army for extra weapon options and things. Currently if you do get the multi-part kit I'd probably go for the multi-melter for the heavy weapon, and I'd probably go melter and inferno pistol for the other two choices with a power sword on the Sister Superior. In general it's just best to be able to pose as much of a threat as possible to big tough stuff, as they'll already do at least some reliable damage to lighter things. I do think that the Ministorian Flamer and the Plasma Pistol are pretty reasonable choices as well though. As well as current kits, there are a few other past discount boxes for the Sisters of Battle floating around as well, 
They have appeared in a couple of the past Christmas Battle Force discount box sets, say the Sanctorum Guard with the Paragon War Suits up at the top there, and the Purgatus mission for the Immolator Exorcist and the Celestian Sacrosancts on the other one. There's also the boarding patrol that they had out earlier in 2023, that one's got some Repentia, Sacrosancts and Standard Battle Sisters in it, and basically all of these could be interesting enough if you can find them at some semblance of the price that they were initially sold for. If they're going for a big markup, then it just might not be all that worth it compared with just buying the kits that you actually want. For gameplay at the moment, there's loads of options with expanding the army. After you've built up a core of the force, you can potentially start specialising a bit to try and make it a bit more effective in-game. Obviously bearing in mind that Warhammer 40k rules change all the time though, and the best list can change each time there's a balance update. Currently, just to highlight a few fairly effective units, the Seraphim often make their way into competitive lists, given that they've got some good mobility and deep strike things, plus being able to move, shoot, move is really nice for secondary objectives and skirmishing. With Ham Flamers, they can be quite a big threat to enemy infantry as well. Armour tends to be fairly popular, the Castigator and the Exorcist are both quite good backline damage dealers, and Immolators can be fairly popular for transporting elite units to the front, potentially chipping in with multi-melters or threatening big overwatch with their immolation flamers. In general, the HQs of the army generally tend to be quite good. The Triumph of St. Catherine is just quite a big model with a lot of wounds and has some powerful buffs that can help out multi-melters nearby. Making Miracle Dice auto sixes is big. Celestine is good value for returning to life and basically getting two attempts to damage and destroy enemy elite infantry. And more than Var, I think, is great for the 125 point cost. Making a Paragon Warsuit unit reroll everything to hit and wound is rather big. They can be a little bit fragile as a squad though. Otherwise, the Arco Flagellants can be quite good just to throw at just about any enemy infantry and stack millions of saves on them. Small squads of Crusaders are pretty good for doing secondaries. They might be one to think about converting though if they're just two miniatures. And there's plenty of fairly solid support characters out there. Some choices like the Palatine with the Blessed Blade are quite nice and there's a dialogous combo with the Triumph of St. Catherine that can make multi multimelters go off with a bang. In general, probably the units that are the most disappointing by the current rules are melee things. Things like Repentia, Zephyrim, and Celestian Sacrosancts just don't hit quite hard enough, I think. And Retributors aren't quite as utterly deadly as you might hope for for a whole cluster of multi multimelter barrages. If you like the miniatures, though, I really wouldn't be put off. As said, the Games Workshop can change the rules at any point, and hopefully with the Codex coming out in the near future, they might show a bit more love for melee armies as well. Talking of rules, the rules for the faction are freely downloadable for Warhammer Community at the time of recording, found in the download section of the webpage under Warhammer 40k. They do have some index cards that you can use as a quick reference guide to the army. You can pick them up from Games Workshop, and they are in stock in some parts of the world, though not in all of them. They'll basically remain valid till the Codex comes out, which has now been confirmed to be Summer 2024. Summer 24 is when the Sisters' actual Codex for 10th edition will get there. That's been recently confirmed by Games Workshop. It should hopefully bring some excitement to the way that the army can play. Usually with the Codexes in 10th edition, the main thing that they add is the different ways to play them with different detachments. Some of them tending to focus around certain keywords in the army. Some of them kind of representing sub-factions that they've had in the past. I feel like the one that we have currently is sort of embodying our martyred lady. Loads of benefits to the sisters dying in various ways and making their deaths count towards the enemies of the Emperor. In any case though, I'd certainly not wait for the Codex to come out to get started. Far better to get a core of an army together and get some games under your belt if you do want to collect the faction. The rules for 40k are sort of changing all the time to one extent or another anyway. Seems likely they might get a few new miniatures alongside the Codex release. At the moment I feel like the miniatures most in danger of being invalidated might be the Ministorum ones, things like the Preachers, Death Cult Assassins and the Crusaders. They feel like they just might be more at risk of either going away or being redone somehow. Otherwise in the meantime you could always think about picking up one of the past codexes if you just want a nice glossy book to read about the sisters and see some pretty pictures of them. They do tend to go at least fairly cheap second hand after the rules are defunct. So that could be one option for a bit of reading material in the meantime. Finally, moving on to getting games with a sister battle, you could potentially start out with playing some combat patrol games with the set, though here I'll talk about the mainstream 40k rules for them. Sister's primary rule mechanic is the Axe of Faith, which allows you to generate miracle dice and then plug them into key roles in the game when you most need the Emperor's Grace to be upon you. 
Miracle dice are either generated by losing your units in game, as well as generating one at the start of each turn, and various units can generate them in different ways, the Battle Sister Squad in particular. The way they work is that you roll a dice and then you set that dice roll off to the side with the number showing. So say if you roll a 6 then you can save that 6 and put it into a key roll as an automatic result when you need that number to come up. It's perhaps particularly big for say getting an automatic wound roll with something like a multi melter or perhaps taking a d6 dice roll and making it an automatic 6. That's really big and punchy. It can be quite fun for movement shenanigans as well such as guaranteeing that an advanced move gets you to an objective or locking in a key charge that would otherwise be really quite a long and risky one. Overall I think it is quite a fun mechanic, and does feel kind of evocative, with the sisters getting minor miraculous interventions over the course of the game, and their faith is rewarded. Otherwise for their detachments, the detachment rule is a plus one to hit if you're below starting strength for the unit, and a plus one to wound if you're below half strength, that one's maybe a little bit more situational and in your opponent's control, but it can mean that if you've just got a couple of surviving members of a squad, they will hit extra extra hard. Otherwise for stratagems, there's a few fun ones like returning fire if models in the unit are slain, a 1 command point for a plus 1 to wound in melee, and a 1 CP plus a miracle dice to revive a slain character to come back fighting, and a couple of the enhancements are quite nice like the relic blade, and one that can help turn your miracle dice into more useful ones by re-rolling them. Finally, just to put it all together and imagine what a sister's force could look like, here are a couple of examples of competitive army lists that have done well in tournaments recently. This first one was really quite a big win for sisters, run by Jeffrey Kolodner, who used it to take first at the US Open Tampa, one of Games Workshop's own tournaments, an absolutely huge event of almost 300 players. Really quite a lot going on with the list, and it is really quite nice and varied, with lots of different units. There's more than Val leading some Paragon Warsuits, with a bunch of multi-melters, and some enormous re-rolls for the anti-tank fire there. St. Celestine leads a bunch of Seraphim. They'll have some move-shoot-move move shenanigans, and Celestine can be a massive problem with reviving when she dies. Junith Arita is a Countess with some Heavy Flamers to farm some command points. And then there's a whole load of Sisters of Battle with multi-melters. Some novitiates led by a palatine with the Blade of St. Eleanor relic. Some death cult assassins and a Calidus assassin for farming up some secondary objective points. Two castigators with battle cannons for some saintly fire support. A couple of immolators to transport things like the retributors to the front, which could have some big hitting firepower with the rerolls that they can get from them. And a couple of mortifiers with heavy bolters and boss blades. A brutal killing machine and a variant of the penitent engine kit. Really quite cool to see such a mixed and varied list doing so well. Obviously it's going to be largely down to player skill, but nice to know that such a mix of sisters units can perform at the absolute highest level of the game. For another option, here's one that I also talked about run by Brendan McKenzie, who used it to take third at Kipper's Melee, another very big tournament, and the list did go undefeated at that event. This one I think does showcase a very different sort of style of sister of battle right now, Basically, rather than going for all that beat down damage output, this one just has an enormous amount of units to try and take points and score secondary objectives and things, and no doubt get more than the opponent. Again, there's three units of Battle Sisters, there's a Dialogus and the Triumph of St. Catherine, which can combine for some seriously punchy multi melters if you feed in Miracle Dice at the right time, a Palatine with the Blade Relic once more, two units of ten Arco Flagellants that I guess would be rolling up in the Rhinos and then just all sorts of chaff units of Arco Flagellants, Crusaders, and Seraphim Jump Shoot Jumping, and they're all mounted up in seven transports no less, three Immolators and four Rhinos. Just in case that wasn't enough Sisters chaff units, there's also a Calidus Assassin and Eversaur Assassin, causing problems with their lone operative keyword and being hard to target. Definitely a pretty unusual army list that one, Mechanized Sisters with a bunch of chaff Ecclesiarchy units on the way but kind of cool that even enemy heavy hitters can't relax given that they can just be vaporised by terrifying multi-melter shenanigans. In any case, I hope that's just given a few ideas or inspiration for collecting a force of Adeptus Auroritus, and as always with these, feel free to let me know your thoughts on collecting the army down in the comments below. Always happy to hear more ideas from experienced sisters generals. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more like this, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k things coming with new videos just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked down in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, 
seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry in the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.